we're going to be looking at ultrasound. The human hearing range is somewhere between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And ultrasound is high frequency sound waves that are above human hearing. So they have a frequency that is above 20,000 hertz. Infrasound is low frequency sound waves that are below human hearing and so have frequencies below 20 hertz. And the ultrasound used in medical imaging is in the 1 to 18 megahertz range. Ultrasound is produced by the piezoelectric effect. And this is when high frequency alternating potential difference is applied across the crystal of an ultrasound transducer. Then the crystal expands and contracts, that is, it oscillates at the same frequency as the alternating potential difference. And the expansion and contraction of the crystal results in the production of the ultrasound waves. A transducer converts a signal from one form into another. So this ultrasound transducer is converting the high frequency electrical signal into a high frequency sound wave, that is ultrasound. The process can also work in reverse so that the same crystal can act as an ultrasound receiver. So when ultrasound waves arrive at the crystal, the crystal expands and contracts at the same frequency as the ultrasound waves. And this induces an alternating PD across the crystal. When ultrasound arrives at a boundary, some of the ultrasound is transmitted through, but some is reflected. And the acoustic impedance is used to determine the fraction of the sound intensity that is reflected at a boundary. An acoustic impedance is defined as the density of the medium multiplied by the speed of sound in the medium. So the symbol for acoustic impedance is Z and we've got the rho for density and C. It's not the speed of light but the speed of sound in the medium. And the units of acoustic impedance will be given by the units of density, which is kilograms per meters cubed, multiplied by the units of speed, which is meters per second. So we can see that simplifies to kilograms per metre squared per second. The fraction of the reflected intensity of sound at a boundary is given by this equation where IR is the intensity of the reflected sound and I0 is the incident intensity at the boundary. Z2 is the acoustic impedance of medium 2 and Z1 is the acoustic impedance of medium 1. When Z1 equals Z2, so medium 1 is the same as medium 2, then you can see that this part of the equation will be equal to zero. So the intensity of the reflected sound will be zero. So no reflection occurs. 
when there is a very large difference between the acoustic impedances of the media, so that is when Z1 is much, much greater than Z2, or Z2 is much, much greater than Z1, then Z2 minus Z1 will approximately equal Z2 plus Z1. So that means this whole term will be approximately equal to 1. So that is IR divided by I0 will equal 1. So IR will be approximately equal to I0, which means then that most of the sound will be reflected. When the ultrasound transducer is placed on the skin, there is a layer of air between the transducer and the skin. And because the acoustic impedances of air and skin is very different, then most of the ultrasound will be reflected off the skin and very little ultrasound will be transmitted inside the body. A coupling gel is then used to remove the layer of air between the ultrasound transducer and the skin. And the coupling gel has an acoustic impedance which is similar to the acoustic impedance of skin. So we have impedance matching. So Z1 is approximately equal to Z2. So that means most of the ultrasound will be transmitted into the body. Very little will be reflected at the skin.